With me on the Film 2000 sofa as we speak, Christina Ritchie. Christina, thank you very much for coming in. Uh, thank you for having me. Can I just check? I always need to check this. Ritchie or Ricky? Ricci. It is Ricci. Okay, yes. I was somewhere close. Yeah, you were, you were pretty close. close <laughs> um, tell us about the movie uh, and the character you play in The Man Who Cried. Um, you play Susie. Yes, Susie, um, is, uh, she's originally a Russian Jew whose family and village had to flee during uh, the Bolshevik Revolution. Um, and she ends up being put on the wrong boat and raised as an orphan in London. She uh, acquires an English accent along the way, which you do remarkably well. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> yeah, very, very well done. Is it, is it tough to, to nail the English accent? Well, it's, it's a little, it's the one thing about the movie that was really daunting, because, you know, if you do it badly, of course, everyone has a right to make fun of you a lot, so... Especially in this country, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but there are not that many that can actually do it, you know. I mean, of course, we always hold up Dick Van Dyke as a fine example of how not to. Right. <laughs> Um, but you don't actually have that many lines in the movie. I mean, the length of the movie and the amount of lines you have. Is, it, is that harder to play a character who, who speaks so little? I actually prefer it. I'd love to do a movie where I was a deaf mute. Um, I, I, always on any set, after about two weeks, the director, the joke with the director and me is that, you know, I will try to get all my lines taken away from me. Um, I don't know why. I just like it better. So this movie was great when I read the script. Uh, I liked how quiet she was. The list of directors you made in such a short career is f fabulous. I mean, really, some of the very best directors of today. Tim Burton, of course, Terry Gilliam. Mm -hmm. um, do you choose a project because of the director, or is it always script? No, it's usually script. Um, I've worked with a lot of first-time directors, too, which I really I really like. It's, it's fun to sort of um, go through, um, like, a first-time director's discovery of the whole process and, and to sort of be of help um, to that. And also, there isn't all this pressure. You don't have to listen to them, you know, as closely as you would have to listen to, like, a distinguished director. <laughs> so you can choose to ignore the first Exactly. Time. You can kind of bully them a bit. <laughs> yes. Um, so working with Sally Potter, this is her second big feature, I guess, really. How would that differ from working with someone like Terry Gilliam, who, let's face it, has been around the block quite a few times? Um, yeah, Sally's a really emotional director, um, which is great because you get an immediate response from every scene that you do. Uh, so it's it's really gratifying, and uh, I think just in terms of you know she's always thinking about the music that's going to happen with it and all these other things and and is very um, sort of vocal about all that. Whereas with Terry, I think you know it's all in his head. Which and sometimes maybe it should stay there. But I, <laughs> I loved Fear and Loathing. I thought it was terrific. Um, Johnny Depp. Here we have someone playing a, a gypsy, and let's face it, we've all seen Johnny Depp in movies. Physically, quite an unattractive, borderline repulsive man. <laughs> Yeah, he's and yet he keeps getting these good-looking roles. <laughs> I can't for the life of me work out what's going on. Um, you've known Johnny since before Sleepy Hollow, or was that when you first met? Um, I've known him since I was nine. Um, I met him when I was working on Mermaids. So, And then uh, we I had a couple scenes in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with him, and then, you know, Sleepy Hollow. So. And, and is it harder when you're then called upon as a, a fellow actor to do, say, romantic scenes, sex scenes with a character who you've known since you were a kid? Yeah, well, it's a little bit weird. And this movie is the first movie um, where I've had to like really have sex scenes with him. And in one way, it was really strange, and I got all creeped out. But then it was great because it was Johnny, and because I'm so comfortable with him we just like laughed the entire time and made fun of ourselves so it was good let's talk about the music in the movie I mean, the music itself is you know plays quite an integral part i mean you've got the gypsy music yeah. you've got the scene where you dance sort of for uh, cesar really yeah once again is that something which is you know kind of tough to do here you are called upon to be you know, a, a, a russian jew speaking english dancing <laughs> gypsy dance for a gypsy in a french cafe yeah um I don't know. I don't know why I ended up dancing in that scene. I think, uh, you know, um, Sally really likes dancing and music, so my character had to do a little dance. Um, it was a little embarrassing, you know. Anytime you have to do a silly dance in front of, you know, a crew that you've been working with for a long time. And... This surprised me because I always thought that, you know, actors and actresses, once they've come over that kind of initial block of performing and, and being in front of people, that they were virtually unembarrassable. But you still. Oh, feel... no. No, no, no. I don't like doing any of that stuff, the singing and the dancing and all that stuff. I get very, very embarrassed. I can understand you being embarrassed while filming That Darn Cat. Well, yes, I was also very embarrassed during the <laughs> filming of that movie and, and for years afterwards. But thank you for reminding me. Christina, thanks so much for coming in. It's a pleasure to meet you. And, you know, I always look forward to you in movies because I always think you, you deliver a fantastic and memorable performance. So thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck with the film.